Hello, Zero K fans, and welcome to Nanalay the Dawn. I'm your host, Chad Fury 333, with a few exhibition matchups for you today because apparently the tournament this morning didn't really end up happening, which kind of sucks, but so it goes. Anyway, first match is going to be between Hokomoko and Labadeus on La Isla Bonita. Starting out, Hokomoko going for the Clokibot Factory and Labadeus going for the Hovercraft Factory, which is, on this map, not a terrible choice. I mean, this map actually... Of all the maps that are made by Sprung, of this sort of tropical island variety, this is the one that I'd say works best for vehicles because, well, there just isn't that much of a pathing difference between vehicles and non-vehicles. Now, if you look at the pathing, there's a few paths that are still not open to vehicles, like this ramp right here is open to bots and not vehicles, but hovercraft hover on the water. So they can actually go around quite a ways. They can't, unfortunately, go with the back here. That, that way's for amphibs only. Which is a little unfortunate. I, I still think some refinement on this map could be in order just to make sure that stuff works out for all factories nicely. But anyway, starting out right here, we have a few glaives coming in. Lamadeus getting first blood, managing to get off one of the glaives quite quickly, but no real harassment. And at the same time, Hokomoko looks like they're going to be in a decent position to start really wreaking havoc in Lamadeus' base. Not much is able to protect it. The top plateau has no buildings at all, except for the e economy buildings. So it has all the targets and none of the protectors, which means Hokomoko's first instinct to go up there, that's going to end up with them finding out that there's a lot of things they can just take out. There's a lot of openings to work with. On the other hand, Hokomoko, of course, does have their factory inside their main plateau, so that should work out all right. They are a bit behind economically, though. Lamadei is clearly putting a lot more focus on getting their economy going rather than their military, which might cause some problems here. If this quill goes down, that glaive... Well, definitely pay for itself, but I don't think it's going to happen. Nah, there we go. Two glaives coming in to finish. Sorry, two daggers coming in to finish that off. No real damage is able to be dealt by that glaive. I mean, there would need to be quite a few more glaives to go up in the top plateau. That one defender there, that's what Lamadeus needs. That's pretty much all they need. And at this point, Hokomoko starting to get a little bit caught up. I mean, they're a little bit caught up. Not enough, though. They, they still need a bit more energy. Still need a bit more metal. It's just... Their, their focus was split between their factories and their economy a bit more than Lamadeus, so Lamadeus, they have that slight advantage, and it's paying off. At this point, Lamadeus with quite the army compared to Hokomoko, who's got basically none. So the main problem here right now is that Lamadeus just has map control. Right off the bat, they have map control. They also have an economy advantage, though Hokomoko has pretty much caught up to that, so it should be fine from here on out. Still... Lamadeus is comfy. I'm sure they enjoy this position they're in right now. I'm curious what Okamoko is going to do. I would expect they're probably going to try to build up a little bit in the back here, maybe get up some Rockos or possibly Warriors, and then work from there. But no, it looks like they're going entirely for Glaives. They want to still push the massive Glaive army, and then work from trying to just push out the daggers as much as they can. And they're probably expecting something, probably halberds or scalpels, which they are going to get scalpels, and the glaives aren't a bad idea against scalpels. It's a little tricky, you have to be careful about the micro around them, but yeah, I would go for glaives against scalpels myself. That's a choice I agree with. Okamoko, on the other hand, going very forward right into this little little cove over to the north side of the map, and there's nothing there. I mean, Lamade is quite close, this is extremely risky, I don't know why they're going in that direction, but if they manage to hold that, that that could work. It looks like that's not going to happen. I don't... I'm not sure what the motivation was for that, but still, there's the scalpel down. There's a few daggers as well that are coming in to possibly die. They're trying to get rid of the glaives, but they are approaching them. And as we all... as For those of you not familiar with Zero K, the way the physics system works, retreating is good. Retreating means that your projectiles are moving further because there's no projectile momentum inheritance. Like, units moving back don't have projectiles move slower as a result. So they end up basically having a trail of projectiles following them that enemies run into. Speaking of which, though, we do have Hokomoko chasing after a bunch of daggers, which doesn't work so well because daggers' projectiles are not a projectile, they're just a hitscan. They don't benefit from retreat micro as much as Glaives do or as Hokomoko's commander does. So Hokomoko at least is getting the southwest. That, that they need, and they have, which is great for them. They have a wonderful position that they can set up now. They have pretty much the entire southwest, if they can control that. Lamadeus isn't putting a huge amount of effort to take that southwest side. They're far more focused on making sure that their main base isn't getting too heavily damaged. And so far, 
it's working out all right. Lamadea still has an economic advantage. It's a slight economic advantage, but they still have it. They still have a military advantage. They are getting damaged heavily by these glaives, though. More daggers coming in to try to stop this entire slaughter of these scalpels, but that's not working out especially well. The daggers aren't here yet, and so many scalpels have gone down. Bear in mind, every scalpel is worth about three and a half glaives, or a little over three and a half glaives. So as many glaives to take out those scalpels, that is value for Hokomoko. Okay, Gauss isn't apparently hit scan, but it's also not going to be... It, it's not the same as Plasma. Like, Retreat Micro is not going to be as effective with daggers as it is with glaives. That was my point. But that is a good thing to point out, is that, yeah, it is technically a projectile. It's just really, really, really fast. And here's Hokomoko with the massive glaive army over to the north side, which by massive I mean 12, but... I mean, that's actually not that small, especially at this stage in the game, only five minutes in. 12, 12 units in a clump like that is still fairly large. Of course, trying to walk through all these defenses isn't going to be that easy, and unfortunately, a bit of a pathfinding confusion here. It's not really possible to have these glaives come together. They're going to have to go around the other side in order to deal with anything, and as we see, that's exactly what's happening. Luckily for Hokomoko, they aren't going through Lamadeus' defenses. Unfortunately, Lamadeus still has a very strong position militarily. Lamadeus appears to be setting up to attack the main base as well. It looks like these daggers are going to be coming into here, over to this lower area. They might go to the southwest where the commander is that is just now setting up the metal extractors, which actually does start to give Lamadeus an advantage. Lamadeus was getting something out of reclaim, but that was accessing in a lot of that reclaim. So at this point, Lamadeus, they're actually slightly behind economically, all things considered. However, they should be able to get rid of this Conjurer, and that is huge. This entire northwest side is in jeopardy. These Glaives might be able to save things. The way this is positioned, it probably will be too late. The Metal Extractors will all die. One of them is already down. The second one's going to go down right away. The last one does survive for the time being, but with the Scalpels coming in, that should be able to completely seal the fate of this northwest alcove. And that'll secure Lamadeus' economic advantage. At the same time, Lamadeus is getting attacked over to the southeast. Lamadeus' commander getting heavily damaged, and this is pretty big. All the storage for Lamadeus going down with their commander. That... That's about 500 metal right there. That's a couple scalpels they're not going to be able to build as a result of losing their commander right there. However, they do still have an economic advantage of about 5 metal per second. A little bit reclaim dependent, but it still exists. And they're going to be able to scout out this gunship plant. With Hokomoko, they haven't actually made any gunships out of it other than a couple of wasps. Now, at the same time, these glaives managing to have a field day over to the southeast while Hokomoko's main base gets ravaged by these daggers. There's... I mean, there's a Lotus there that will help, but it's not going to help for long. I mean, once this metal extract goes down, the rest of the daggers are probably going to try to push through. Although, even then, it's still... They can go around the edges, go through the solar collectors, and then hit the stuff on the other side. And on top of the scalpels in the front, this is... A massive assault. Lamadeus just wants to win this before Hokomoko can really pull out an economic advantage from breaking all of Lamadeus' stuff around the sides of the map. And that might work. And we are seeing a lot of damage being done to the gunship plant and the, what it's building, and not enough production coming in there for it to really work out. However, with the scalpels coming in, that gives the warriors all the chance they need. At this point, I would like to see Hokomoko go for enough glaives to get through the, the penetrator. I mean, that's the thing that will probably work considering the unit compositions. The scalpels are rushing into the warriors, so the warriors getting loads of kills, which, in fairness, it doesn't really deserve, but it's working out beautifully. That's what Hokomoko needs, and they're getting it. Lamadeus, on the other hand, all they need to do is keep themselves in a strong position. I mean, they've got Hokomoko contained. And Hokomoko is setting up some rapiers. They are trying to set up their contained break. Lamadeus already on top of that with the flails. So Lamadeus already knows how to set themselves up to get out of that. I mean, the scalpels as well. That helps a ton here. As well, the glaives over to the side have been taken out by a few protective daggers coming around the eastern side of the map. But Hokomoko still with their glaive harassment force. Lamadeus is aware of that. Fully aware of that. Or at least aware that there are glaives over there just hanging out waiting for a chance to attack. And, well, we see where the glaives may not always work. Penetrator is able to get through enough of them that it 
doesn't work the way that I'm sure they would like to have it work. That is, Hokomoko would, would rather have had the Glaives come in to deal with the Penetrator directly, but now at this point, there's nothing, or at least very little, protecting the main base from everything coming in here. Hokomoko might be on their last legs. A few hero glaives coming around the sides of the map to try to stop Lamadeus from being able to rebuild from here. That's good. They need... That's... Hokomoko is doing the right thing. They're making good choices on that. It's just they're in such a tough spot right now that even with good choices, winning this game is going to be a massive uphill battle. Thankfully for them, Hokomoko does have an economic advantage as a result of having already set up the southeast. Sorry, the southwest. They've got this set up. they got the south set up as well. Their commander having moved out way earlier in the game gives them the breathing room they need to stay alive now. And that breathing room is going to be pretty much the thing that keeps them in the game. And here's the Glaives. This is what I was talking about earlier. This is what I wanted to see. And now we're seeing the Glaives really work out. Unfortunately, still getting a lot of splash damage, but able to break the contain. That's the important thing. If they can get the Penetrator, that will finish it. And it looks like they will. So that is the Penetrator down. A few more Scalpels coming in here. But Hokomoko is able to break the contain mostly. Managed to get down to the lower plateau at least. And this second wave of Glaives, I think it'll break the contain. It looks like it'll break the contain. It won't quite break the contain. There needs to be a few more for that to happen, clearly. But there they are. A few more coming in here. I I kind of wish Hokomoko would hold them back a little bit and prove them up. We get about a dozen of them. Because I don't know if Pokemoka realizes they do have the economic advantage. They can afford to stall a little bit. Thankfully for them, Lamadeus has not sent forward any workers yet, but there is a quill coming over. And that's exactly what Lamadeus wants to do. Because, I mean, Lamadeus, they need that reclaim. They, they are behind on metal. They could really use that reclaim. I don't know if Pokemoka knows that. I'm sure they do. Okamoko is, in fact, setting up, though, for a bit more of a stalled attack, getting more glaives behind the attack. And then Contain, I would say, has been largely broken. I mean, Hokomoko was never really, truly contained. Their production facilities were contained. But even then, we have a Strider Hub in the, over in the western side of the map, a Dante being built up. And I see Lamadeus has already come somewhat keen to that. And unfortunately, it looks like this is going to work. Or unfortunately for Hokomoko, fortunately for Lamadeus, they will be able to stop this, or at least... We'll be able to at least know it's a thing to worry about and deal with. Now, Lamadeus, on the other hand, I don't see any Strider Hubs. They're working entirely from that one Hovercraft platform. They have not much else right now. And assaulting the Dante is going to be quite the uphill battle, but the commander going down! Hokomoko actually didn't lose all that much when you think about it, but they did lose the forward position. And the main thing they lost there was having a well... Well, having a strong unit in the front, able to basically keep them from losing too much. They don't have any other workers here either, so there's nothing to rebuild defenses. It's just a small, slow war of attrition, which it seems Lamadeus will win. The Penetrator in particular will win this fight. One more shot from the Penetrator will get rid of the Dante. And the question is whether it'll be done in time. 24 seconds is not enough. This Dante is down, so the entire Strider Hub strategy is not working out. But at the same time, that being said, the Glaze coming around the back here, just dealing with the hovercrafts, dealing with the storages, getting rid of the can from Lamadeus. And this assault here, with Lamadeus' army being primarily focused on getting rid of the Dante, which they have succeeded in doing, that opens everything up for Hokomoko to take out Lamadeus' main base. I mean, the hovercraft factory is back to being rebuilt, but still, there's a lot that's open here. And Lamadeus losing the expansion they made over to the northwest, losing the quill. We should see Hokomoko start rebuilding over to the northwest as well. And Hokomoko has twice the economy of Lamadeus, which is amazing considering how strong of a macro player Lamadeus is. This is a testament to Hokomoko staying on top of things and doing everything in their power to keep themselves from getting locked into their main base and taking as much of the map as they can. I mean, Lamadeus, they're pushing back on this. They don't want to give Hokomoko all this economy for free. But man, Hokomoko has taken this. Oh, and people are asking for the attrition widget. I don't think that'll work because I haven't had it up the entire time. As I mentioned before, feature request, have the attrition widget always counting even when it's not displayed. Or have a way of hiding it without taking it out completely. 
Anyway, because I'm pretty sure Anarchid's actually watching the stream. But yeah, with... With this setup now, it looks like Lamadeus does have a bit of a preparation for all these glaives. But Hokomoko, they have enough money right now, they can easily approach this however they'd like. And I mean however they'd like. They could build a silencer if they wanted to, most likely. I don't think they would. It doesn't seem like a wise idea. But they could. And I should point out a large part of that is the fact that losing their commander just contributes to the reclaim. But there's just a lot of reclaim they have around the entire map. All the forces that Lamadea suicided into their lower expansion area, that's theirs. The commander destruction, that's theirs. And of course, there is still the fact that all of these metal extractors, all the ones over to the southwest, they're all theirs. Hokomoko owns them all. Hokomoko, however, coming with all these glaives, and it looks like Lamadeus already has the composition to deal with them. I'd like to see Hokomoko vary up the composition a bit, because that's going to be necessary. And they're going for a crow. Of all things, they figure, well, I've got the money. I might as well go for a crow. And, yeah, you almost might as well. I mean, that's about a thousand metal... No, sorry, that's not a thousand metal quite yet. That's about 700 metal in their storage. I mean, that's a pittance compared to what the crow's cost of 4,500, but still, that's that's quite a bit compared to... Also, considering the fact that they have 60 metal per second. And they've, they're rebuilding their economy as well, on top of all of this reclaim. So at this point, Hokomoko is still comfortably set up enough. They and Lamadeus are relatively even. Lamadeus... Coming with the Halberds over to the western side, and that might break Hokomoko at this point, with Hokomoko focusing entirely on this crow. Like, they're gambling on the crow. That is their entire game plan right now. Put all the money into this one unit, go into Lamadeus' base, and just crush everything before Lamadeus can counterattack. So, this is coming down to the wire. Hokomoko's win condition is 40 seconds away from being completed. I mean, at the same time, we are seeing that Hokomoko is not slouching around the map. They just don't have a huge army on the ground anymore. Like, most of their army has been destroyed. They have a few glaives here and there, but it's not quite enough, especially with the halberds and maces coming in, especially, especially the maces. The maces just counter glaives completely. But all these units coming in... I mean, with the crow up in 15 seconds, the crow could deal with everything here, but then what... Lamadeus, what are they going to do? They're going to build screamers, most likely, or at least... They're going to build chainsaws, and they already have razors. So the crow, on the one hand, kind of needs to help out breaking away everything Lamadeus has built up here. On the other hand, if it reveals itself too soon, it's going to be a bit of a waste. Or at least it could very well become a waste, but it looks like, no, this is going to be revealed. It is going to show itself. It is going to deal with these frontline forces coming in here from Lamadeus. It kind of has to. And it should be able to get rid of basically everything built up here. Between there is the D-Gun, between the Glaives and the star Sharpshooter as well, between the Spectre, I should say. And now the Mace is down, these Halberds can only do so much. Of course, at the same time, Lamadeus building far more Flails, not building a whole lot of anti-air defenses, though. I don't see any Chainsaws, I don't see any more Razors. So they're not so worried about it quite yet. Either that's a timing thing, or they're just going to rely entirely on Flails. But the way this is working out, Hokomoko is going to have Glaives and a Crow. The Crow is going to basically occupy the anti-air, of course, but that means all these resources go into anti-air, which kind of have to, because crow, that's not going to go to anti-ground, and the glaives can deal with the flails while the crow deals with everything else, most notably the maces, whatever is left of them, or even the halberds, although the halberds, of course, once they start shooting, the glaives can have a field day with them, and there's no maces in this army either, so these flails are basically dead, the glaives are coming in, and it looks like the crow's not even going in that way. The Hokomoko's just totally thrown off Lamadeus. Lamadeus' entire anti-air army is in completely the wrong place right now. The Crow and the Flails, and Lamadeus now realizing this, but they've already lost a few Flails. Most of their army is way out of position, which is even more important. The Crow's going to be able to just sweep across the entire eastern side of the map, wipe everything out that Lamadeus has while these Glaives come in. I mean, really, it looks like the main point of the Crow at this point, or at least the main effect of the Crow, has been to open things up for the Glaives. Get rid of the few maces that are there force a bunch of flails to be constructed and give the glaives the opening they need as a result of that. And to that end, it's been beautifully effective. And of course, at the same time, the crow is still being a crow and wrecking up the place. And yet a second crow is coming in on top of that. Another 20 seconds, we'll have two crows coming here from Hokomoko. I mean, how often do you even see one crow, let alone two? I mean, it's... 
on Lava pointing out in chat that they were so scared of Glaives they had to make the worst unit in the factory, being the Halberd. Which I totally disagree with. I mean, the Mace is one of the weakest riot units in the game, I'll grant, but the Halberd is great at wrecking any strongly defended position. Like, that is the way to get through strongly defended positions. I don't agree with that entirely. But, yeah, against Glaive, I would not use Halberd. Like, Mace makes sense because it is a riot unit. It is a bit over-specialized when it comes to riot units, but it's still there to get rid of things like Glaives. But yeah, at this point, Hokomoko looks like they're just playing clean up. The Crow coming into the eastern side of the base. The Glaives wrecking up. Actually, this is this might not go super well for the Glaives, but the point is the Crow. The Crow is in a wonderful position, so even if the Glaives over in the northwest die, they've dealt quite a bit of damage. There's not a whole lot repairing all this stuff. Most of the units are out of position to try to help deal with this, and the Crow is just going around doing its thing. So, hey, Hokomoko's happy, and that's one Crow. As we should point out, there are, in fact, two crows on the field right now, and a third one that's... there's a second crow. A third one in production. Hokomoko's mass-producing crows. Actually, you know, Mace might be too expensive. That might be the problem here. Although, at this point, the, the second crow is actually taking loads of damage. It's having a hard time keeping itself alive. The first crow is doing fine. For the amount of damage it's dealt and all the stuff it's managed to get across and deal with and kill, it's actually doing okay. If it can break stuff open here, get rid of a few Stardusts. Oh, if that opened things up for the Glaives, that could give Hokomoko the one little crowbar pry they need to get through the last of this army. Looks like the second crow did have to retreat a little bit. Still doing all right, though. Still managing to get rid of some units here and there. I mean, both crows are taking a decent amount of pressure, but they each have over 4,000 HP. So they're still in a fairly safe position... They probably don't want to be too risky, but man, look at all the damage Hokomoko has dealt. I mean, Lamadeus has lost his entire side of the map. And the north side as well, the eastern side is done. Hokomoko can take that whenever they like. And Lamadeus has... I mean, they have the army they have, yes. And Hokomoko has lost a lot of forces. But most of these losses... Oh, actually, quite a few of these losses are in Lamadeus' territory. That could be a problem. Lamadeus is going to be reclaim reclaiming a lot of this, but if you look at their economy right now, they only have 20 metal per second static. Most of their economy right now is reclaim. Whereas Hokomoko has about 60 metal static. So, in terms of static metal, Hokomoko has got a threefold advantage. In terms of reclaim, taken into account, Hokomoko is still basically doubling Lamadeus. Although Lamadeus does have quite the opening, with the crows being such the investment they are, Lamadeus does have only to worry about where the crows actually are. I mean, obviously they have to worry about whether or not the crows are wrecking up their own stuff, but that's all they have to worry about right now. They don't actually have to worry about whether or not the crows are going to be over to the southwest, because they know they aren't. The Hokomoko doesn't have enough forces right now. They only have those three crows. And I mean, that's a lot of money, but that's a lot of forces. It's just highly concentrated. Also, it's highly damaged as well. I mean, one of them's got their auto repair going, but still, it's... It's only so much that can do. And the third crow coming over to the north should be able to take out the north side completely with the help of the glaives. I mean, once the razor's down, there's not much that'll stop anything. So with this, Hokomoko pretty much has the win. They've lost the southwest, though. Still a small victory. For Lamadeus. And it looks like Hokomoko is just going to be attacking on all sides. They have a few glaives over to the south. Not really going for the main base because that one Stardust there is going to cause problems. But they are making sure that Lamadeus can't build up too much of an army. What they aren't doing is reclaiming all this stuff. But I imagine they will fairly soon. I mean, this, this Conjurer's Idols, a few other idol Conjurers around the map. And there is a mountain of reclaim over in the center of the map. That would be wonderful to get rid of, but I think they're just figuring Lamadeus is going to surrender now that they've lost most of their own reclaim. And the Crow is just wrecking everything. There's not much really stopping them. Really, the Stardust here is the thing that's keeping Lamadeus alive. If that goes down, there is not much else. And Lamadeus is the economy they have. There is not much else. Yeah, there it is. Lamadeus throwing in the towel. As the three crows come into the base, don't even manage to kill the factory themselves, but hey, three crows. How often can you say you've seen that? And wow, that's a lot of reclaim. Both players reclaiming about five and a half, six hundred thousand, or five and a half thousand, six thousand metal. 
Now, when you consider the excess as well, that's... Oh, wow. Hokumoko had almost 10,000 metal excess. I didn't even realize that. I mean, I noticed the excess that Lamadeus had earlier on, but... Wow, Hokumoko really just... Looks like around the time they lost their commander. Although they also... Ah, right, because they also had a huge amount of reclaim as well. So, yeah, there you go. But, I mean, even then, considering that, Hokumoko still had a massive mental advantage. Like, considering even with... Even with the excess, with almost 10,000 metal lost to excess, they still used 10,000 more than Lamadeus. Especially near the end, but even throughout the match, they're still ahead of Lamadeus in terms of the amount of metal used. Lamadeus, the main thing here, if you look at the stability of the unit value line, they didn't have as much money, but they still, for the most part, kept a unit value advantage up till the point the crows came out. Actually, partly up till the point that there was the massive influx of glaives that got rid of the, the contained force. And then the crows came out, and at that point, it was pretty much over. But yeah. Anyway, that was that, so... Next match will be a match between... Lamadeus and Snugglebase on Into Battle. Stay tuned for that. It'll be up in a couple moments.